Hello everyone, welcome to Gentlesen. We are continuing with our lectures on occlusion. So till now we have discussed that occlusion is the contact relationship of maxillary teeth with the mandibular teeth and it develops through various stages. So that we discussed in occlusion part 1 video. In occlusion part 2 video we discussed that how the changes occurring in the mixed dentition period are important for the development of proper occlusion in permanent dentition. Now in the permanent dentition when we look at the occlusal surfaces that is the surfaces of the teeth where they contact opposite teeth and if we try to join these surfaces we draw a line at these surfaces we we'll get a plane which is known as occlusal plane so what do you think is this plane a flat plane no 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 this plane is not a flat plane so how is it so if we look at this plane from the side where we can see all the teeth so this is the anterior direction that is incisors are towards the anterior towards the front this is the posterior direction our molars are towards the posterior towards the back side so if we try to draw a line passing through the occlusal surfaces of all these teeth starting from anterior going towards the posterior direction what do we get we get a curve yes so our teeth are arranged in the shape of a curve in anterior posterior direction which is known as anterior posterior curve not only that if we look at these teeth from the front side and this is the midline that is left side and right side and we can see another curve which is going from medial direction to the lateral direction to the sides which are known as mediolateral curves now what is that so if we look just look at this molar so if we look at this occlusal surface of this molar on the occlusal surface this molar has a cusp which is towards the outside that is buccal cusp and the other cusp which is towards the inside that is on the lingual side towards the tongue so lingual cusps are lower placed and buccal cusps are higher placed so that gives a shape that is a curvature is seen on both the sides on left and right and this type of curvature is known as mediolateral curvature which is shown by all the teeth so all the teeth are arranged in this type of curvature on their occlusal plane so we can say that these two types of curvatures one anterior posterior curvature and second mediolateral curvatures which are seen at the occlusal plane where teeth contact opposite teeth are known as curves of occlusion that can be your important short note for your theory exam these curves are also known as compensatory curves we'll get to know why so let's see the details of these curves in today's video before starting quickly subscribe to dentals and if you have not done till now also give a like to this video as i keep making such interesting videos for you so what is happening permanent teeth are replacing deciduous teeth permanent mandibular teeth they contact permanent maxillary teeth at a plane at a line which is known as plane of occlusion how do we draw this plane of occlusion this passes through the occlusal surfaces of posterior teeth that is premolar to molar their occlusal surface and the incisal edges of anterior teeth that is incisors and canines and the plane that we get by joining these surfaces is known as plane of occlusion and it is not a flat plane so what it is it is this plane of where the maxillary and mandibular teeth contact it is in the form of a curve which runs from anterior direction to posterior direction and this is known as anterior posterior curve also these teeth from the front side they show another curvature that is they are arranged in another curvature which runs from mediolateral direction so those are mediolateral curvatures in mediolateral plane so we can say that these curves are seen conforming to the arrangement of teeth in anterior posterior one and second mediolateral planes these curves are known as curves of occlusion or compensatory curves so there are three compensatory curves curve of p which is anterior posterior curve curve of wilson which is mediolateral curves and then curve of walls and that we'll get to know so these three are called compensatory curves because they compensate they compensate for the path of the condyle so that this path is taken easily while the movements of the mandible during mastication now let's see the details so first is curve of speech was given by Ferdinand and graf von Spee, german embryologist in 1890 so they visualized the relationship of mandible mandibular teeth in sagittal plane so how do we look at this curve so when we are viewing from a point which is perpendicular to the first molar so our eyes are perpendicular to this point what do we see we see an anterior posterior curvature of the occlusal surfaces starting from the tip of the mandibular canine so this is a tip of the mandibular canine 
and following the buccal cusp buccal cusps of premolar and molar buccal means the outer cusp now these premolar and molar teeth they are posterior teeth they may have buccal cusp which are towards the outside and the lingual cusp which are towards the inside but we are talking about the buccal cusp here. so when we draw this line passing from the tip of the mandibular canine buccal cusps of premolars and molars so we get a curvature that curvature is known as curve of speed so that is how you define this curve of speed now where do you think this curve is deepest in the second premolar region so normal depth is 1.5 millimeter at second premolar region and that can be your viva question where the curve of speed is deepest at the second premolar region now if we extend this curve of speed what will happen let's see so if we extend this it passes through the condyles condyle of mandible and it forms a circle of about four inch radius so this is the center so this circle has four inch radius that can be your another viva question what is the radius of the circle which forms by extending the curve of speed now what is the rule of this curve why teeth are arranged in this curvature let's see first is it accommodates vertical overlap of anterior teeth our anterior maxillary teeth they overlap our anterior mandibular teeth like this in vertical direction so this curvature if it is there it accommodates that overlap it helps to provide that overlap second is it allows the normal protrusive movements of the mandible protrusive means forward when mandible is moving forward this type of curvature also helps in those movement of mandible third is this type of curve and teeth are arranged in this curve it this it becomes perpendicular to the masseter muscle so masseter muscle is arranged perpendicular to this curve of speed so that adapts for the favorable loading of forces on teeth so whatever forces are there they are favorably loaded on the teeth with this kind of arrangement of teeth in curve of speed perpendicular to the masseter muscle so those are the three roles of curve of speed now let's see the second curve curve of wilson it is the medial lateral curve that context how do we see this curve so let's see we are seeing the molar region of both the maxillary and mandibular teeth so we are we have cut here the section is cut here and we are looking at this section here so we can see the left and the right side so we can see both maxillary and mandibular molars first molar so if we see at the buccal and the lingual cusp tips on each side of the arch now these are the buccal cusp tip of maxilla buccal cusp tip of mandible on both the sides and the lingual cusp tips of maxilla and mandible on both the sides so if we join them so if we pass a line drawn through the occlusal surface of right mandibular first molar like this passing across the arch and then through the left mandibular first molar what we'll get will we get a curve of wilson yes so that is the curve that is passing through buccal and lingual cusp tips on both the sides from the mandibular first molar so that is how you define it now if we look at the molars now let's first look at the mandibular molars so this is a straight line so but mandibular molar is placed like this so in which direction it is tilted so this is the lingual direction so mandibular molars are inclined their long axis is inclined towards the lingual side so we can say that lingual inclination of mandibular posterior teeth is in now let's have a look at the maxillary teeth so these are the maxillary teeth so where are they inclined so this is the straight line so they are towards the buccal side they are inclined towards the buccal side so maxillary posterior teeth show buccal inclination and if we look at the buccal cusps of both the teeth maxillary and mandibular they are higher placed compared to the lingual cusp tips of both the mandibular and maxillary molars and because of which this curve is formed curve of wilson is formed now here we get another viva question that what is the shape of this curve so if we look from the mandible side it is appearing concave but if we look from the maxillary side from this side it looks convex so that is the viva question shape of curve of wilson from mandible is concave maxilla it is convex now what are the functions of this curve of wilson that why teeth are arranged like this medial lateral curve first is because teeth, this type of arrangement makes the teeth parallel to the direction of the medial pterygoid muscle so if this is the medial pterygoid muscle and this provides the optimum resistance to matic masticatory forces so this type of arrangement helps the teeth in providing resistance to the masticatory forces second is this type of arrangement permits the lateral medial lateral jaw movements in the, in this direction whatever the jaw movements are happening during mastication so those are permitted because of this arrangement third is it provides easy access to the occlusal table occlusal table is the area 
between the cusps of teeth so if this is mandibular molar so this is the occlusal table so when we chew food our tongue gets easy access to put food here to put food on the occlusal surface also another role is that taller buccal cusp these buccal cusps are taller compared to the lingual cusp which are lower place so what will happen the food will be prevented from going past the occlusal table so food will be stopped there so the taller buccal cusp stop the food to go past chewing position so that we can easily chew our food so those are the roles of the curve of wilson now let's have a look at the third curve curve of monson monson said that occlusal plane f seen in the three dimensional view it is a spherical structure so let's imagine that this ball is that sphere we are talking about so this sphere has a center at the glabella glabella is the point here between the so this sphere has a center in the glabella and the surface of this sphere this surface of the sphere that is outer part surface of sphere it passes a segment of that surface that is a part of that surface passes through the plane of occlusion of the teeth all the teeth and the condyles and that segment is known as monsoon curve so monsoon curve passes through both right and left side all the teeth as well as condyles so monsoon described this curve in 1932 as a segment of as a part of the surface of the sphere this is the sphere its surface only a segment only a part of that surface is 4 inches in radius and its center is at glabella so this is glabella so that is how we describe the curve of monson so all the buccal cusps and the incisal edges of mandibular teeth so buccal cusps which are towards the outside and the incisal edges of all the mandibular teeth they are on the this segment so they conform to the segment of this sphere and all the masticatory forces converge at the center at the center of this sphere that is why the teeth are arranged like that but later on this theory was discarded because demster and colleagues proved that longitudinal axes of the teeth are not converging towards the common center they are in different directions so this theory was discarded so those are the three curves now let's see the curve summary of curves of occlusion or compensatory curves curve of spee is the anterior posterior curvature and curve of wilson is the medial lateral curvature curve of monson is the segment of the surface of the sphere whose center is at glabella but this theory was discarded now let's check what have you learned so first diagram what curve it is shown in this diagram what is the direction of this curve in which direction it runs what is the deepest where this curve is deepest second diagram which curve is shown here what is the name of that curve what is the direction of this curve and then what is the shape of this curve in maxilla and what is the shape of this curve in mandible then third diagram which curve is shown here and this curve is a segment of which shape that is what shape this the occlusal plane when it is seen in three dimensions so that is all for this video if you really enjoyed the video do tap on the like button and share this video with your friends keep watching keep learning and keep smiling good luck for your exam see you in the next video soon till then take care bye bye